Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about using the Cloudinary Upload Widget. Essentially, what it's going to allow you to do is have full media upload functionality in your application in a matter of seconds. So let me show you how to get that set up. I know a lot of you, especially my past students, are working on like your capstone projects, and those applications are definitely going to require some type of media upload, whether it's images or video or what have you. So we're going to get that working here and uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. So over here in Cloudinary, this assumes that you are logged in, you have an account. Once you're logged into your dashboard, it's going to look something like this. And you're going to go all the way down to the bottom left corner and click on the settings cogwheel. And then you're going to scroll over or you're going to move your mouse over and click on upload. And then you're going to scroll down and click on add upload preset under the upload preset section. So when you do that, you want to uncheck or you want to change the signed option to unsigned. And then up here, you just want to copy this or give it a, a more memorable name. So we can do something like upload, upload widget test. How about that? All right, cool. So then there is an orange button right here in the top right corner for save. You can leave all the other settings how they are for now. So with the name and with the signing mode switch to unsigned, you can click on save. And that's that. So now you have this upload widget test here. So you can go back out of your settings, uh, but I'm going to toggle over to the documentation for the upload widget. So you want to go over to the docs and then go over to the widget section on the left upload widget, uh, or you can just do a search for Cloudinary upload widget documentation. All right. So once you're on this page, this is just a preview of what this looks like and go ahead and bring this back up here and this is the mobile version and as you continue going down you're saying explain to you you know this is how you use it yada yada this is the demo code right here so you can just copy this this is what we'll end up using you can click on this button and preview it you can see a couple other options that are available and you can continue going through here and seeing all the different ways of doing this so you can break it up into multiple files we're just going to do it all together in one file for simplicity's sake but you can have your javascript file you can have your HTML file and then whatever else you need to get it working. So let's head over to code pen over here. This is just a blank code pen. This is how simple it is to get this running on the front end. There's no back end code involved right now. Now, of course, you're probably going to have a back end. And so there are some steps you can take to send this information to your back end after the image has been uploaded to Cloudinary. So that information is included in the documentation. I'll show you how to get to it here in a second. But with that demo code copied, we're just going to paste it in right here. Let's take a look at what we got. So we have the button up top here, and then we include the Cloudinary upload widget. Uh, it's like a CDN sort of thing, but basically the JavaScript file uh, that's going to give us all of the code in the background that we need to get this working. And it'll give us access to Cloudinary. So over here in our next script below it, we're going to create a new widget. My widget is equal to, and then cloudinary.create upload widget. So this is going to take an object and the first key here, cloud name, we need to replace its value with the actual cloud name of our project. So back over in the settings, I'm going to, this is where we set up, you know, the, the preset right here. So I'm going to go back out of settings to my dashboard. And then I'm going to go to my dashboard right here, top left corner. And you can see here's your cloud name front and center. So this one for me is called Craig Sports. This is from way back when we were doing the uh, Surf Shop app, and it was originally called Craig Sports. So I will copy this and head back over to my code pen where I can replace the cloud name here. Now, my preset beneath it, the value for the upload preset key is going to be changed as well. I can't remember what we called it now. I think we called it upload widget test. If this doesn't work, we'll know that I misnamed it. All right, so Craig's boards for the cloud name, upload widget test for the upload preset. And that's all you have to do. That is it. You just paste it in. You put the preset name in there that you created in your dashboard over in your settings. You put your cloud name that you created when you signed up and created uh, your account with Cloudinary. And now whenever you do, whenever you click on this upload files button down here inside of your actual user interface, you get options to upload from your local computer so you can browse, 
web address. So from somewhere on the web, have it be uploaded to your Cloudinary account. You can do it that way. You can use your camera, like your webcam, or you can, if you're on your phone, then you can use your phone's camera. Google Drive, Dropbox, Shutterstock, Getty Images, it goes on and on. I think you can do Instagram or Unsplash, iStock. So lots of built-in integrations here. A lot of stuff that would take a long time to code if you were doing this manually. So I'm going to click on Browse here. And then we'll just do an image to start. So I'll click on an image here. And it's uploading right now. So you can see the little loading wheel in two spots. And green check, we're done. So then when it's done, you can click on the orange done button down here, and it'll take you out of that interface. Now, if you notice in our code, whenever we have a successful upload, we actually log the information about that upload. So the response from the Cloudinary API over into our console. So this is useful because now we can handle this. We can take that information, we can send it to our server. Uh, there's actually extra steps for connecting directly to your server, but you could also just send like a fetch request or something. And so you can see here's the object with the response information. Most importantly is the secure URL where we can actually copy this and go preview that image that we just uploaded. And you could share it anywhere and it would actually be the image. So with Cloudinary, if you're not familiar with it, you can add things like transformations where you can change the size of your image, you can optimize your image. And now with all their cool generative AI stuff that they've got going on, you can do a lot more. So be sure to check that out while you're over there on their website. Okay, so that was it for uploading an image, but what about videos? Video upload is a lot more difficult uh, than uploading images. It's a tricky thing to do. So if you can have an interface like this that where you literally just plug in a couple lines of code, and obviously you'd wanna change the styling. They have documentation showing you how to do all that, but you can even change the interface here a little bit too with some of the configuration settings they have. If you can just have something built in like this that handles the uploading of your videos, that is major. So let's click browse here and I'll go to downloads and click on a little short video from YouTube. And I have, <laughs> it's already done uploading. That's insane. So here, green check, boom, it's done. So this is 1.42 megabytes already done uploading. And we click done, this window closes. If we look in the console, Here's all the information about the video. Here's the secure URL. The difference, of course, between that and the regular URL is that it's using TLS. So it's got the HTTPS and the URL. So if we paste this in, there it is, uploaded video, just like that. So now you can take any video you want, upload it through an interface on your website, store it in your database, use it in your web application with a couple, just a couple lines of code. So this is pretty wild. Just the fact that this sort of thing is available is really great. Hopefully you can use this in your projects. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'll definitely be using it in some of my future projects as well. Before we go over here in the documentation, just wanna show you along the right-hand side here is all the additional stuff that you can do. So we kind of just scratched the surface here, but even in just the few things that I showed you, you can see just how powerful it is. But if you go down here, it's like the bottom where it says notifying server-side code then you have some options here where you can integrate with your backend. So lots of cool things to check out here in the documentation. Let me know what you come up with. Thanks a lot for tuning into this video and we'll catch you all in the next one.